As an educator, what is my primary purpose? And the answer came to me that it is to give people skills and tool sets to lead happier, more fulfilling lives. And if I didn't do that, then I felt that something was missing in the picture. So long story short, I ended up putting a course together on happiness. And this was back in 2009, almost 10 years back. And it's just gone from strength to strength. Every single year that I've taught this course, I've had a waiting list. And then a book came out, and my Coursera course came out. And now I teach uh, in, in several schools around the world. So that's been my journey. I think that the main reason for the success of that course is that there's a deep hunger for the topic of happiness around the world. Maybe particularly among business school people, but you know, even, even other people. There's a lot of hunger for the topic. And I do think that I got certain things right. I mean, it's a course on happiness after all, so you've got to look happy. And I looked happy. <laughs> um, simple things like that, you know, and I branded myself as Dr. Happy Smarts, right? Um, and I also got in a really kind of quirky people to co-teach the class with me as guest speakers. I had a lot of animation. Uh, I made the course a kind of uplifting course. You know, it's a course on happiness, like I said. So all of these ingredients, I think, made it uh, really, really popular. In India, it's 20% it's in the US too. It's not much higher. And around the world, a Gallup poll said that only about 15% of the people are really engaged at work. Uh, this is a big problem. And I think that if you really want to understand what employees need to do in order to keep, um, or, or managers need to do in order to keep their employees happier, you need to read my next book. Okay. Uh, well, jokes apart, um, you know, very quickly, there are five things that organizations can do to increase the happiness of employees. One is to cater to their basic needs, which, you know, with, you know people who are watching this video, is prob they probably are working for organizations where that is happening already, but four, four other things. Um, that people feel a sense of autonomy and uh, empowerment at work. They feel a sense of progression towards building skills, towards mastery. They feel a deep sense of connection, relationships with people uh, at work. And finally, that the culture is a good one. The organizational culture makes them feel good. It's a fun, joyful uh, culture in which they feel really supported by other people. And if these things are there, then employee engagement and, and happiness is going to go up. The reason I wrote the book is because there isn't a correlation, right? The people who are smart and successful, you would think, would be really happy because, A, we are brought up on the steady diet, particularly maybe as Indians, that, you know, forget about happiness, forget about, you know, enjoying life. First, work hard, be successful, and then you're automatically going to be happy. The problem is that that doesn't come, okay? Uh, you keep working, 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 and then one fine day you retire and you wonder what happened to your life. Um, uh, and and ha you, the reason we think smart people are, are going to be happy is because, Smartness basically means you're very good at understanding cause-effect relationships, getting your goals achieved. That's what a lot of smartness is. And so you would expect, given that happiness is an important goal, smart people would be happier. But we don't see that either. Okay, So that's why it's so intriguing, this topic. Why aren't the smart and successful as happy as they could or should be? So short answer to your question, there isn't a correlation between IQ and happiness, which is why I have this book. You need five things in order to be happy. Your basic needs need to be fulfilled. You need to feel a sense of autonomy at work. You need to feel that you're, progression, you're progressing towards mastery at work, building skills. You need to feel that um, you have good sense of nice, healthy relationships at work. And finally, you need to feel that the organizational culture is a good one, a positive one. Now, one thing I didn't say here is that you can actually do more for your own happiness at work than your organization can do for you. Okay. Um, and so you can do things in order to help yourself meet your basic needs, which includes, for example, leading a healthy lifestyle. You could do things to gain autonomy at work, which might include things like maintaining a good things to do list. You can do things to gain mastery at work, which starts with understanding what your skills are, what do you enjoy doing, and, and pursuing them at work actively. Uh, you could do things to make your belonging, your relationships better at work, for example, by being grateful to other people that support you, by uh, being positive to other people and helping people. And finally, you can do a lot for the culture of the organization by bringing this attitude of celebrating other people's victories rather than feeling insecure or jealous when other people succeed at work.
uh, kind of bring in this element of what I call the abundance mindset rather than a scarcity mindset. So if you do all these things, I think that you would really find yourself to be much happier at work. I, I love it, and I especially love this, that I'm being recorded here. I feel like a rock star. Thank you very much. <laughs>